Hi everyone, it's the English Daddy here and welcome back to another part of Dream Daddy. I think this is part four now that we're on, maybe? Yeah, I think maybe part four. Anyway, I am definitely feeling like a daddy today. I got my little dungarees on. I was very wary about buying dungarees, but look at these. Look, I'm like a total daddy. I have like full body length dungarees on. What the heck? So I'm like all dressed up in my daddy get up and we're gonna hop right back into this part. My save said meet Damien. I feel like Damien is a very gothic name so I think we are about to meet one of your guys' favourites, Mr. Goth Daddy. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping centre with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> Language, missy. Heck yeah! Better. <laughs> That's literally me trying to be a child-friendly channel here on YouTube. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's a greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. Dude, you need to like get a five guys in your soul. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? Ugh, you better not be vegans. I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honour of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. I mean, probably. That's not even like a possibly, that's like a very likely chance that that is a stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and Whoa. dig in. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely mm. delicious. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. That's like impressive, ma'am. So, eh? something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? <laughs> Why is that like the like dad of 2017 quote right there? <sighs> Which meme? <laughs> all, all memes. <laughs> I, I don't even think he'd call them memes. I reckon he would probably call them like memes. Can you explain memes to me? Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all those youths have already done the joke to death. That is so true. Like when Jake Paul said, what are those? Even though that's like a two year old vine. I mean, sorry if you're a Jake Pauler up in here, but you gotta, you gotta sip that truth tea. And what's worse is that, and what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on a meme train. Oh my God, that is so true. But just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it and it isn't funny. Are they gonna reference a meme right now? Oh shit, what up? Aww. Dad, please. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? Mm -hmm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as the anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment. Are you talking about Hot Topic? I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Hmm. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. This is freaking hot topic, okay? I've only ever been in one hot topic in my life and that was in 
Orlando when Dan and I went last year. However, the whole of Affleck's Palace, if you live in Manchester or if you have visited Manchester and visited Affleck's Palace, you will know what I'm talking about. For all you Americans or like other people who don't live anywhere near Manchester who have no idea what I'm talking about, Affleck's Palace is literally like, it's like hot topic times a hundred because it's this massive tower block that was just filled like when moshes were a thing Affleck was the place you hung out in and then it kind of keeps up to date it's like scene emo it's had all the trends now it's just very vegan and there's a lot of like vintage places this is where I actually got this t-shirt from so Thanks, Affleck's Palace. Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the bag. There it is. You can still see in the outline, kinda. I'm so proud. <laughs> that is so gross. Speech, Amanda. Yeah. Speech, 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 speech. All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Oh. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an, his an historic, that, shouldn't that be a historic, I don't know, a historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Anne, by the way, had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the hmm. mall. After begging her father to take her to Dead Goth and Beyond to buy rainbow suspended suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Huh. That deserves a round of applause right there. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster, and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Yeah. Oh hey, chain wallets. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in a dead goth and beyond. Oh, I, I think there, I think there may be something for you to look at. Peruse the band t-shirts, look at ironic mugs, check the clearance bin for hot deals. Ironic mugs all the way. See those memes that you've been asking about. I'm suddenly stricken by existential fear. If there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many mugs that say that? This whole time I thought I was the only one. He's such a nerd. If I'm not number one, where do I place on the global dad ranking charts? I would say Victor was fairly high recently. Leave in the comment section down below what number you think Victor would be at. I have work to do. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of an Edwardian dressage. Oh, I don't like him already. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I. I'm the manager. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Oh, he's that dickhead of a customer that you get in shop. I don't like him already, guys. I'm sorry. I know he's like goth daddy and he's like one of your fan favorites, but seriously, if he makes a shop assistant's life hell, then I can't date him. Whatever, dude. <laughs> the man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. I really just want to take the piss out of him. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it oh comes. No. Hey, Dadtron 5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. <laughs> At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. 
I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up. Radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Don't like Damien. Really don't like the guy. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh cool, long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers is on. That literally sounds like my favourite show. Like I would watch that to death. Imagine, Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers. <gasps> Insane. Your favourite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts. But they're, but also, they're hunting ghosts. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogpone, the twin brother truck driving ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghost gone done got the ghost done got control of the truck. I can't steer them on their what? I can't even read that. On them their damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying, you're gonna die. That's because we are about to die, you. This is art. <laughs> the episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. Our daughter is a troll. Sorry, but I should never have adopted you. I should never brought you into my life if you are a troll. I stay up a little longer, curious about the explo exploits of Callum and Flint, Dogbone, after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Aww. No sexy times with alcoholic daddy. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. <laughs> you have never ever let me have five more minutes. So, get up. Fine. <laughs> we have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. Well, that turned out pretty awful then if it was meant to be a bookcase and turned into a desk. Huh. So, you excited for the cookout today? Excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. If there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store-brought sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Mm. Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Mm. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighbourhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. That legit just sounds like me at a barbecue. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Whoa. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Hmm. Okay, so we're at Donald Trump's house. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. Oh god, we're gonna bump into like his wife, ex-wife, I don't really know, aren't we? She tried to hit on us at the bar. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Welcome, I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hi. <laughs> this is Christian and Christy, they're twins. Whoa. 
They stare creepily and say nothing. They are literally the twins from The Shining. I can literally just imagine them both stood in the doorway at night like red rum. Yeah. Red rum. I saw someone's game the other day. It was hilarious. Someone posted it on Twitter and it was basically the twins. Her game had glitched and they appeared in every freaking scene. I was dying of laughter. I was like, oh my God, they are so creepy. I The way I'm dressed today, I look like I belong in Joseph's family. Like that is just awkward. Then of course, our youngest, Krish. Wait, where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Yeah. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Krish to bed? I'll have to go look for him. What? You'll have to. Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Victor and his daughter, Amanda. Aww. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to turn to. She's literally such a wine mom. Also, my I know my eyes are going like this, this whole part, and it looks like I may be having a seizure. I don't know why, it just does that when I put, a sh put on like a posh accent. It's weird. I love her. <laughs> nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. That's literally a Friends episode. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. Ha ha ha. My wife has a wonderful sense of humour. But please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. She has like such a freaking sweet tooth. His daughter is like actually me. Ugh. I don't want to have to make friends. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Mm. Dad. Ugh. They're going to talk to me about the weather. Dad. Go do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. <laughs> Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. <laughs> but wait a second. All of these people live in our cul de sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Ooh, who do we talk? Oh my god, my top three are right there. Screw the rest of you guys. I'm gonna go talk to Matt, Hugo, mm. and Craig. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. This is like a daddy clan. Oh, can I just have a meat sandwich between all of you guys? Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. I can't even remember what accents I gave to each of these guys. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. And to try and take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Uh, let's talk to Craig. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. How'd resistance training go the other day? Great. Little River here is a great cheerleader. 
aren't you, tiny bro? <laughs> Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. She must be a handful at that age. Oh, uh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. She is so cute she's like the cutest little baby i actually think i love craig just because he has this adorable little baby attached to him all the time also i'm sorry for throwing up on you dad how are you settling in uh almost done the new place is perfect i never get too comfortable the new place is perfect it's really cozy and the neighborhood is beautiful i'm so glad we moved here and i'm even more glad that we're right next to my old best friend craig gives me a playful punch on the shoulder Ow. <laughs> I remember that hurting less in the past. Nice. Sorry, sorry. I've been doing push-ups and stuff. Victor, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. I can't remember what voice I gave Matt. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. I can't even remember. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognise jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Am I cool now? I told you this game needed flower crowns. That was in my first part. I was like, give me the flower crowns. And still, Matt doesn't have one on his head, even though we have to imagine that he does. The girl stares at him, thinking it over. You have a cool ass kid. Like, give me your like whole look. Like, you are cool as fuck. Mm. Nope. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. <laughs> hey, Victor, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen Sita. Carmen Sita? Huh. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually. Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher. Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh. Yep. You're still going to get that overdue term paper. <laughs> Great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. Oh. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? What? Hugo looks around the party. We must finally spot him. He must finally spot him because his eyes go what? wide. Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega! Are you smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. <laughs> I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into a gutter. Mm. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Mm. Man, I do not envy Hugo. Last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove and Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned half the, nearly burned down half the yard. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread over onto my lawn and burned down half of my yard too. Hmm. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Um. Hey everybody, sorry about that. Victor, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey, nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Oh. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh, yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. You kid's smart, Hugo. I gotta hand it to you. He's a pretty smart kid, like, uh, your generation does do that a little bit, not gonna lie. Ouch! <sighs> Ernest! Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in a corner. Well, 
That was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Oh. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad. And he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Hmm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. Oh. <laughs> See? That right there, you can't say that. I don't know. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. They are pretty cool. Oh, he's got his flower crown now on now. He actually like has it on. Why weren't we allowed to wear a flower crown? What the heck? I want to wear one. I said I wanted to be a bisexual princess and feel like we can't be that without a flower crown. And now Matt has one and I don't. <gasps> That's just rude. They look like they're holding hands. You better not be holding hands, boys. I'm watching you. I uh don't know. Oh. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once rage against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the movement they but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the car a yard to my daughter. This is not going to end well. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your um. point. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We all can't be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well. But there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Hey. Don't let us eat up your time, Victor. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Uh, who should we talk to now? I feel like we should talk to... I mean, Joseph and Damien are like my least favorites. Let's go Robert and Brian. I love Robert. <laughs> I really like Robert. I glance across the yard and notice Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man. I don't think I want to deal with being one up by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. Oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. <laughs> Victor! How the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood, all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. <laughs> That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great in high def. I don't know why he's gone to a Yorkshire accent suddenly, but I feel like it suits him. <laughs> oh boy. Victor, have you met Robert yet? Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. <laughs> we were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught a first fish. It's good to see you taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. <laughs> My voice, I can't do that. I can't do that voice all the time. And it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Mine loves sugar. She's like a sugar addict. Brian raises his eyebrows at me. Being inside making art. She won a local competition for the art. Yep. Did I put it on too strongly? Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Anyway, I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. Same here. Well, things change once you have to- Wait, what happened the last time? Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the backcountry. I can't even- I, I can't remember the voices I gave them. It's really difficult. Johnny Boy's a strong kid. Met him, met, met him in my army days. Comes from Kansas. They build him tougher out there. Anyway, things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle when the rope bridge snaps. You could see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny Boy's screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. 
We're two days out from the next living soul and here I am, my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress the wound, but now I've got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. I won't lie to you. There were moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny boy, but you build a bond with your brothers in arms and that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. I guess that's camping for you. Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went inner tubing down a river and he lost a flip flop. Miss that kid. <laughs> Brian and I laugh nervously. Or am I kidding? Well... Brian and I tense up again. I'm kidding. Uh. Phew. <laughs> Amanda and Daisy barrel up to us laughing. Daisy is holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. We gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors. Yeah. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have an emergency escape button. Uh, -huh. uh then hit the brake, I guess. And then we'll get out of this truck. Uh. The imaginary truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts. But how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although, I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. Mm. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert! Uh -huh. Wait a second. Are you guys playing? Long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Yeah. Amanda and I love that show. Yeah. It's the best, especially that episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such quality reality television. See, I wish this show were real because Love Island just finished and now I have zilch to watch. So I wish this were real and I would watch it. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. <laughs> All right, Daisy, I found us a couple of books. They're gonna make a great meal, lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy, icy wasteland. <laughs> but there's a whole load of table on the food right over the- Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find a kindling for fire. Yeah. Okay, but not an actual fire, because we're playing pretend. All right. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. Uh. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. Whoa. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm, it's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. I want to watch a let's play where someone is like proper going for Brian. I reckon there are probably a fair few out there because like he's like the big old bear, isn't he? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people too. Uh -huh. Oh ho ho. Kids, right? Gotta love him. You're required to. By law. <laughs> I hear that. Uh. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play dirt for him. They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah. That'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. Okay, I am going to leave this part here because it's been quite a long part. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. I promise by the, what, next part, I will try and have all the accents down. I mean, I, I've decided on a lot of them. So hopefully I can remember the other accents and... My accents will be on point, I swear. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will speak to you all in the next part. Bye guys!